welcome back. In the last lecture, we were discussing about the Poisson summation formula. Uh, the underlining feature of that, we were periodizing the function or defined on whole r and treating that periodization function and doing the Fourier series as a one periodic function and we are able to get uh, uh, certain information about the function knowing only at the values at the integers. So, uh, in that philosophy, uh, there will be lot of problem which uh, one will encounter in various uh, uh, other engineering and uh, science. Uh, more specifically in the information theory, where we are uh, getting into the problem of recovering the whole function from the samples. So, what do I mean by that? Now, so, suppose I have a function like this and only I know the values of the function only at the integer points. So, these are all the integer on the discrete points and can we recover the function f. So, uh, towards this, so let us assume let f uh, has moderate decay and f sub f hat is compactly supported and support of f hat is contained in minus half to half. That means, uh, if I have minus half to half, this is on the frequency side, f is 0 outside this. It is a continuous function and it is 0 outside. So, now we can actually think this f hat as uh, a one periodic function, uh, I will take suppose f hat is something like this, then I will consider f hat as a one periodic with getting the periodic extension, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, so, so, now for this f hat of xi, this is equal to f hat of xi and I can hit the indicator function of minus half to half of j. This is not going to change uh, the value of f hat because outside this, uh, because f hat is 0 outside minus half to half. So, and on j is in uh, half minus half to half, chi of uh, minus half to half j is 1. Okay, so, now we are we said that we are treating f hat as a one periodic function therefore, so now what we can get is that f hat of xi this is equal to summation n varies over z f hat hat at n e to the power 2 pi i n xi. Now, this what we had observed is that this is going to be f of minus of n if we are taking a nice function and e to the power 2 pi i n j. So, this is by making a change so minus n goes to n this is f of n e to the power minus 2 pi i n j. So, therefore, this is nothing but indicator function of minus one half to half xi summation over n varies over z f of n e to the power minus two pi i n j. So, so th therefore. So, this is uh, this is summation n varies over z and f of n n 
enzyme. So therefore, what we get is that uh, if f hat is this, then from this what we get is that f of x this is equal to integral mi minus half to half f hat of xi e to the power 2 pi i j x d j. So, that so then we plug in the value this is equal to summation over n varies over z f of n will come out of the integral f hat has support at so this is and e to the power minus 2 pi i n j into e to the power 2 pi i x z d z. So, this of course, we know the uh, we have computed this integral several times this is equal to sin pi of x minus of n by pi of into x minus of n. So, this is our f of x. Now, as you can see that we are recovering f which does not have a compact support, but which has a nice decay uh, from knowing the value only at the integer, because uh, we know the value of sin uh, pi x minus of n for a, every x and every integer n that is known to us. So, now only information of, of f at the integer we are able to get the entire f reconstruct the entire f on the real line. That is quite powerful uh, and has been used profusely in information theory, signal processing and other. Uh, okay, so, uh, now we will uh, also see another nice application of uh, towards uh, finding an infinite sum by using Poisson summation formula. So, what, uh, what we would like to prove is, uh, so summation over n varies over z 1 by n plus alpha square, this is equal to pi square by sin square pi alpha for alpha belongs to r minus z. For all non-zero alpha, this we, we can compute this infinite sum. Remember, this is nothing but uh, when we are saying uh, this is n equal to minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so, let us see how to prove this. Consider g of x is equal to 1 minus mod x if mod x is lesser equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. So, this is the function and 0 otherwise. We have computed the Fourier transform of this. Then you take g hat of xi. This we know that this is sin square pi xi by pi square j square. Now, let me call this as h of j when j is not equal to 0. Okay. This is uh, what we have seen and calculated several times. So, by Poisson summation formula for this h what we have n varies over z h of xi plus n this is equal to summation over n varies over z h hat of n e to the power 2 pi i 
जाइ एन सो दिस इज इक्वल टू एच हैट ऑफ एन एच हैट ऑफ एन इज व्हाट इफ एच इज दिस देन दिस इज द फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म इज गोइंग टू बी एच हैट इज गोइंग टू लुक नथिंग बट g of minus of x h hat of x is equal to g of minus of x so uh, that means what are the integer for which this h hat a g of n is going to survive only when n is equal to 0 so this is nothing but h hat of 0 and that is not equal to 1 okay so this implies summation n varies over z sin square pi n plus alpha divided by pi square n plus alpha square this is equal to 1 okay so now this sin square pi n plus pi alpha is nothing but minus 1 to the power sin of pi n plus alpha this is equal to minus 1 to the power n sin of pi alpha now if i take the square then this is n varies over z this is sin square pi alpha divided by pi square to n plus alpha square which is equal to 1 this implies that summation n varies over z 1 over n plus alpha square this is equal to pi square by sin square pi alpha so this is uh, uh what we know that uh, summation over 1 over n n equal to 1 to infinity this diverges and uh, now for alpha uh not an integer what can no, we say about suppose minus infinity to infinity 1 by n plus alpha you see i am not we are not talking about n equal to 1 to infinity 1 over n plus alpha so now this uh, uh, alpha is uh, no more uh, uh, it's not an integer so for this i can write can we find the value so this is uh, minus infinity to minus 1 1 by n plus alpha plus n equal to 0 is 1 by alpha plus n equal to 1 to infinity 1 by n plus alpha so this i can we can write plus summation over n from 1 to infinity 1 by n plus alpha plus 1 by minus n plus alpha now let us try to find what is uh, uh, n plus alpha as we can uh, uh, as one can uh, see that uh, let us uh, rewrite it again what uh, we have got that 1 over alpha plus summation over n is equal to 1 to infinity 1 over minus n plus alpha plus 1 over n plus alpha this what we have got is uh, 1 over alpha minus integral 0 to alpha pi square by sin square pi x minus 1 by x square dx this is what we have got 
so, one can easily see that although it looks like that this function under the integral this has a singularity, but as we know that if it goes to uh, if x goes to 0 this tends to a finite limit. So, the singularity is not there. So, now this is equal to 1 over alpha minus this is going to be minus pi by tan pi x and then this is uh, plus 1 over x this is 0 to alpha. Now, again at 0 limit we know that the limit x goes to 0 minus pi by tan pi x plus 1 by x this is equal to 0. So, this one becomes 1 over alpha plus pi by tan pi alpha minus 1 over alpha this is equal to pi by tan pi alpha. So, we can uh, and this is what we can prove it uh, thus summation over n from minus infinity to infinity 1 by n plus alpha this is nothing but pi by tan pi alpha. So, this for 0 less than alpha less than 1. Now, if alpha is not an integer but can be uh, it is uh, uh, alpha is either greater than 1 or alpha is less than 0. So, now we have only proved that this is between 0 to 1 alpha lies over here. What about the alpha not integer and lying here? So, as we know that this alpha I can write this as bracket of alpha plus alpha 1 where 0 is less than alpha 1 is less than 1. So, therefore, if we are writing the left hand side n equal to minus infinity to infinity 1 by n plus alpha this is going to be minus infinity to infinity. 1 by n plus bracket alpha plus alpha 1. This sum with the substitution is again going to be minus infinity to infinity 1 by n plus alpha 1. Now, we have the result uh, for alpha 1 because it is less than 1. So, we can write this this is pi divided by tan pi of alpha 1. So, and very interestingly if you look at uh, if alpha is equal to one half then there is a symmetry. So, hence what you are going to get summation minus infinity to infinity 1 plus n plus half this is the symmetry which is going to give you 0. So, this periodization technique what we have used to get 1 by n plus alpha square and then by using that we have got uh, 1 by n, n plus alpha. So, there are a lot of lot more application of this periodization techniques uh, in mathematics and in other science. So, now let us uh, ask uh, now let us see one of the nice property uh, of the continuous function what uh, uh, we know that is essentially Westerus approximation theorem. It says that if f is a continuous function on a b uh, closed interval a b then there exists a the sequence of polynomial which converges to f uniformly. So, set of polynomial is dense in C a b 
the, uh, that is what is the statement. So, we will uh, see an another proof not by using the Bernstein proof, we will see uh, another proof uh, of this result in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.